me with a little volume, please. I don't wish to shout. And I'm not even willing to do that. Please help me. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I want you to look at your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, you see the way you are doing. I don't like it. Change. Smile. Hallelujah. Help me and tell three persons, God is by my side. Say that to three persons. Hallelujah. Help me again and say to five persons, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Please help me and leave your seat and say to five persons, heaven will help you this morning. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, finally, I want you to do something crazy this morning that will provoke heaven for your sake. Overtaking is allowed. Am I talking to somebody? We are no longer living in a generation where if you come to church, it looks as if before you enter the church, you just haven't had any information that uh, your brother died. No. We are living in a generation where if you come to a church, you should be happy. Because heaven is always happy for your sake. And that's why I don't like people that when they come. I don't like people that when they come to a church, if you look at their faces, it looks as if something has happened somewhere. Listen, you need to learn how to smile and rejoice in God's presence. Am I talking to somebody? I want you to do something crazy this morning that will shake heaven and that will put your enemies and the devil to shame. I want you to walk to seven persons and tell them, I will overtake you and collect your blessing. I will overtake you and collect your blessing. Say that prophetically. Walk to seven persons and tell them, there is power in your voice, your word. I will overtake you a few blessings in this service. Ah, 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 man, ah, man. ah, I love you, Jesus. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Overtaking is allowed. Overtaking is allowed in God's presence. Overtaking is allowed. Hallelujah. Today is Mission Sunday. If you are going to preach to somebody and then immediately you enter the person's house and the person look at your face, looks as if they use apple and rub on your face. And your face is like this. Let me ask you a question. With that kind of face, if you preach, Will the person respond to that preaching and accept Jesus? He will say, please, have to carry your problem and go. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want you to know that not only Mission Week, by God's grace, we will also be rejoicing. Because I know whether you preach or not, God will still win those he wants to win. Actually, he arrested Paul. Nobody preached to him. Am I talking to somebody? Nobody preached to Paul. He just gave him one slap. Boah! Cover his eyes. Praise God. And the next time Paul opened his eyes, nobody asked him to preach. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. This morning, I want to speak on what a title. I think it's in your program. Mission now as ever praise god mission now as what ever hallelujah 
You hear me, child of God? Everybody seated here is a missionary. Are we together? Everybody seated here is a missionary. In fact, one of the key of you becoming a believer is to be a missionary. Praise God. It's to be a missionary. And I want you to know that being a missionary, there are so many things that need to be done. And I've also come to understand as a child of God that the talent God has given to you as a person, the purpose of that talent is for you to use it for mission and evangelism. If God has given you the voice to sing, hear me? The purpose of that voice is to use it and evangelize and tell the world that Christ is alive. If God has given you the ability to speak eloquently is to use that word, those words, that ability to minister to people. And people sometimes, people have asked questions. I can sing. But I don't know how to use my voice. Yes. Even in your compound, there are songs that God has given to you. As you sing them alone, somebody by their side will hear the voice and will ask, which church are you attending? Is it Presbyterian? The person may ask, can I follow you to your church? Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody? And that is why in my little definition, I put it this way. I say mission is an important assignment given to a person. It's an important assignment given to a person to complete a specific task. Praise God. It's important assignment given to a person to complete a specific task. In other words, when God has given you the mandate to carry out this aspect of evangelism, you don't just come and begin to shout, I'm an evangelist. No. There is a specific place he has sent you to. And if you go to a wrong place, child of God, hear me, you won't succeed. Am I talking to somebody here? If you go to a wrong place where God has not sent you, I tell you the truth, you won't succeed. But when he sends you for an error and he gives you a particular place, to evangelize. Hear me as you are going to that place. One of the key things I know he will always do for you is to give you a backup. Am I talking to somebody here? And when you enter such a place with God's backup, whatever you say, God will honor you. Let me say this to all. Do you know that in the days of Jonah, there were other ministers of the gospel. Better than Jonah. In the days of Jonah, there were great men and great women who can speak, who can preach better than him. But why is it that God said, it is you I want and you must go there. There were pastors in the land there. But because God had assigned that specific place, am I talking to somebody for Jonah? And that is why even when he tried to run, God said, no way. He took off. He wanted to, you know, outplay God. Inside the ship, God disgraced him. And he came back running. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And so I wanted to know that, like I said, when God gives you a particular place, or a particular assignment to carry, one of the things he will give you is his backup so that any place you enter, 
Ah ah. I hope I'm free to go down. Daddy, I hope I'm free to go down. Ah, because I, there's a church I went to. They say, don't leave the place. Oh. Don't leave. So they put me in one big cage like this. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that is why in Isaiah chapter 61, hear the child of God. He said something very important in that verse 1. He said, Behold, the Spirit of the Lord is who is upon me. For he has anointed me to do what? First, to preach the good tidings. It's an assignment. He has anointed me to carry out an evangelism. He has anointed me to support the work of God. He has anointed me not only in this present era, but he has anointed me also even in the days ahead to come to do this work. Today we are living in a generation where if we talk of evangelism and mission, people will tell you how much is needed there. We are living in a generation today where if you want to plan a program, the first thing people will ask after this program, what will be our game? We are living today in a generation where if you are sent to preach somewhere, the first thing you ask, how much is money? But well, that is not the mind of God. The mind of God is to win souls for him. If you win souls for Christ, you will never remain his son or his daughter. Because the first assignment he said, when my spirit comes upon you, the next thing is to preach. In other words, you are not to stay one place. You are to move out to do something for him. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen God step into your house? He said, how much do you have? He said, I have 10 naira. He said, give me 10 naira. Have you ever seen a day you just prepare one good food and you're about to eat and you see God appear? He said, hey, stop. Give it to me, let me eat. No way. There are two things God needs from us. Number one is to praise Him. The Bible says, and God inhabit the praises of His people. Number two is to win souls for Him. Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? And so I want you to know, child of God, that if these two things, if you put them into work, I tell you the truth. God will defend you even beyond your imagination. And I've seen that in the scripture. Why is it that the man they called John the Beloved? That they tried to kill him, they couldn't kill him. Am I talking to somebody? They turned him outside and no way. They tried no way. They put him inside Pamoya. Yeah, yeah the Pamoya couldn't consume him. And they said, What are we going to do? They send him, they throw him inside the wilderness. And the book of Revelation we are reading today from him because of assignment when God gives you an assignment in the area of evangelism or any other thing to do listen nothing will kill you until you accomplish it am I talking to somebody it's not about you it's not about what you know it is not about where you have entered it's not even about what you think you are doing that men will see and praise you it's about his assignment in your life. Are we together? Because what? The spirit of God that is upon you is available to keep you until you fulfill the assignment. Look at them and tell him I will not die. I will live to work for God. Say to your neighbor, I will not die. I will live to work for God. That is why that even when they fired an arrow in the night, ah, this mic is disturbing. That even when they fired an arrow in the night to kill you, and suddenly the I am that I am appear. He said, Touch not my anointing and do my prophet. And he asked a question, why? He said, the assignment. The other day. You went to work. 
you have worked. And you came back home tired. And you went to bed. Without prayers. You slept off. And in the morning, because you didn't pray, they say, hey! He did not pray. At least, this is an access for us to destroy him. And suddenly, as they release their spiritual missile, the Yam that I am appeared. He said, You can't kill him. You can't destroy her. There is an assignment he or she needs to do for me. Am I talking to somebody here? There's an assignment. There's an assignment. You can't. And sometimes they ask, He has committed this. She has done this. She has done it. She has done, and then she's permitted to die. Hear me, child of God, you will not die. The reason is the assignment. The assignment, and one of the assignments is mission and evangelism. Let me declare to 13 of you here every arrow that wants to bring you to your grave before you fulfill God's assignment, I return it back to sender in the name of Jesus. If that is the way you are shouting that amen, something is wrong with your life. Let me hear the loudest amen if you know you can shout that amen. I want you to know that because it's important. Let me show you a man. A man called David in the scripture. Well, you have been reading the Bible. But for me, nobody has ever committed the kind of sin David has committed. Eh? Are we together? David is the only man that committed two sins at the time. Remove Uriah. Kill him. Collect his wife. He didn't marry the woman. No. He collected the wife through the back door. As a king, nobody can challenge him. And suddenly, the woman became, I don't know, maybe second or, fourth or third or fourth first lady. Praise God. And yet, even when the prophet came and told David, David said, such a man should die. And the prophet said, you are the one. Did God kill David? Did God kill David? What did God say? A man, after who? Here? No, wait. In those days, let me also say this to you. If you read the book of Leviticus, that when the prophet wants to do an atonement, nobody comes to the church. Those days was temple. Nobody. Everybody will stay very far from here. It's only the prophet that comes in. And before the prophet will come in, there's going to kill bulls and the rest of them ram. And then we we'll use the blood, sprinkle on the people. A lot of sacrifice will be made. And as the prophet is coming, you know, they used to wear this big gown. They would tie it to bind and the rest of them. They will use a very long rope. Tie the prophet on the waist. Then that rope will carry bells, small, small, small bells. And then the prophet will be entering because even the prophet himself, if you mess up, God will kill you. Am I talking to somebody? I want to show you something. That because of God's assignment, God kept David. And as the prophet is coming, if he moves, moves, let me show you. One, two, three, four. He will stand. And start praying. Is there any way I've seen against you? Lord, have mercy. Then, no, as he's standing there, the rope will no longer move again. So, the people there will draw the rope. If they draw and the prophet draws it back, they say it's alive. If they draw, draw, the prophet did not draw it, they say he's there. So through that rope, they will drag him out. You see the process. So if he draws and will draw back, and those bears will make that sound, they say it's alive. He will move again until he will enter the temple. That is why all of us sitting here, you should be thankful to Jesus Christ. Today we have access. Even when you are a sinner, you can climb this place. You can climb here. You can still kneel down here. 
Even when they roar, God's anger would have, you know, destroyed you. Mercy will show forth. But hear this. Let's go my passage. This man called David because of assignment. A day came that David was very hungry and he needed to eat with his men. And there was bread in the temple. David said, I will not remain here and die. David is not a prophet. David is only a king. He entered the temple, carried the bread and ate. And even shared it to his men. And God looked at him. That would have destroyed him. God removed his face. They say, what is the problem? Assignment. That is why I believe that I will not die until I fulfill God's assignment. That's why I believe that no man can kill me until I finish his work. That's why I believe that no accident can destroy you until you finish his work. Because anytime they roar like a lion, Isaiah 54 verse 17 will come for He said, Don't know. There's no weapon that is formed against my children shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against them in judgment, he shall be condemned. He said, For this is the vindication of the righteous. That mark of assignment. Am I talking to somebody here? You are alive today because God wants you to carry out an evangelism. That's why we are seated. And so Isaiah says, he said, Behold, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the good news. The second one, he said, to bind up the brokenhearted. That those who are weary, those who are kind, those who are going through pains and challenge, he has sent me. Are you aware that you are seated here today celebrating and enjoying God's grace? There are people that are dying somewhere. And we need to reach out to them and say, ah, there is hope. There is hope. There is hope. There are people that need only encouragement that will come back. Am I talking to somebody? There are people that say, I'm talking now. For years now, or for months, they have been under oxygen. And they say, Lord, take my life. God is saying to us, he has anointed you. You need to say a word to the person. Sometimes you don't need to pray. Just a word. The person's soul will be revived. To say, indeed, I know there is hope. Am I talking to somebody here? It's a mission. It's not just to sit one place. It's a, a specific assignment to be carried out. Media should help us. Let me show you something. In Isaiah chapter 61, verse 2. I want you to see something there very important. And then I want you to see something there. He said, look at it. He said, do, say, to do what? Can we read it together? I want to go. He said, to proclaim the year and the days. Oh, the last one. He said, to do what? To comfort all who do what? Come on. That's an assignment. There are people as I'm talking today. What they need is to comfort them. And sometimes we keep complaining. God, God, I've been doing that often and often. Have you ever asked yourself, this free oxygen you are breathing, is it your own? Am I talking to somebody here? The man of God was just telling us something that he went to pray for someone in the hospital. And he said, when he went, the man was crying. He said, I've lived on earth for 75 years as a person. All my life, I've lived without oxygen. He said, but in this the six months I've been in the hospital, I've been living with oxygen. He said, I pay huge amount of money in those oxygen. And now discover that God has been giving it to me free without anything. Because I'm saying, there are people that say, I'm tired, I will not do it again. No, you are not tired. If God said to you today, it's tired, what will you do? Listen, not even the pastor can save you. Not even the church can save you. Am I talking to somebody? Let us look at verse 6. Let's see the grace God has given to us. In that Isaiah chapter 61, verse 6. The grace God has given to us. Verse 6. 
The name God call you, the name God call me. Isaiah 61 verse 6. Very important, that name that is so powerful. He said, and you shall be called what? Priest of what? And you will be named ministers of what? Every believer is a minister. If you can minister through the word of God, you can minister through songs. If you can minister through songs, you can minister through counseling. Am I talking to somebody here? I have a woman, she's not a pastor. She's not even an elder. In one of our parish. She's not a pastor, she's not an elder. But I discovered that these young girls and young boys, anyone that have a problem, they run to her. That woman is more than a mother. Because even when you are dying, she, when, when she finished talking to you, you will change your mind. You will change your heart. If you can minister through God's word, you can minister with your resources. And I tell you the truth. There is something in you that God has given to you. And you need to use it. You think if Christ comes to the rapture takes place, that God will ask you, what and what did you do for me? <laughs> Praise God. You think if, if Christ comes today, we we'll ask you, eh, where you were going to a church, how many Sundays did you attend service? He said, I, 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 well, I tried my best. At least I have 60%. You think Christ will ask you, can I see the number of dresses and good shoes you have been wearing to a church? I think we will ask you. He will ask you one question. The assignment I committed to your hand. And I gave you a gift or talent. Have you used it? Have you used it? And not even our daddy seated here can answer that question for you. Not even the elders. Not even your best friend. It's a one-on-one -on -one question that you will answer. And if you have no answer, then he has a place to keep you. We are talking about evangelism. We are talking about mission. Let me ask us. Even the ones, let me ch 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 us this morning, challenge us this morning. Even the ones that God, you didn't minister to them, you didn't preach to them, you didn't do anything. God, on his own, brought them to church. You still have the ability to drive them out of the church. You have a question to answer one day. You didn't bring them. They came on their own. The Holy Ghost went to the houses and brought them to the church. And you have the ability to send them away. Ha! You have a question to answer. I want you to know it. And I keep telling people this. Even if we don't raise funds for mission, mission will still move. Because he that has ordained it knows how and where and what to do. Yeah. I was given a paper to deliver. To talk about mission. Okay, for listen and witness. And I actually I told them something. I said, hear me. I said, if you want, if we want evangelism, mission evangelism to be active in Presbyterian church, then we must begin it from our house. How many neighbors are living in your compound that they don't go to church? Can they look at your life and say, child, I've seen something in this life. Let me follow the person to Christ. Today in Nigeria, Muslims are increasing every day. Look at Abaklike. Abaklike was known as a Christian state. See Abaklike today. I think 40% or 50% are now Muslim. They are taking over the whole places. And we are sitting down waiting for God to come from heaven. When he has given us talent and power to do what we are supposed to do. Today in Africa, I think in Africa, they have their school there. Faba. And they are increasing. What are they doing? They will come to you and tell you, what do you want? Say, ah, say, I've been suffering. Nobody can help you. They say, come, we'll help you. But will you become this? And one of the strategies now they are using now is that they marry our girls and then they change them from Christianity to Islam. 
But hear me. If we evangelize well as a people, and we disciple our children well, and we put them on trap with Christ, nothing can pull them out. Are we together? Because if God, if you're a minister, and I am a minister in this particular area, then we have the ability to turn the world to Christ. But we keep saying this, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's their church. It's their own. Am I an elder? Am I a minister? What concerns me? What concerns me? The day God will ask you a question, please remember to tell him what concerns me. Praise God. And Jesus, if you look at the book of Matthew chapter, I mean chapter 18, are we together? Matthew chapter 28, from verse 18 to 20, you will agree with me that that, means that statement came as a result of the burden for evangelism. Because Jesus, as the king of kings, he knew that there are people that need to hear about this gospel. And he said to them, he said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Not only him, even to us, seated here. He said, therefore, go and do what? Make disciples of what? Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Hear me, let me say this to us. You are not a servant. You are a son. You are not a servant. You are God's daughter. Am I talking to somebody here? And a child need to carry out the instruction of his father. If you read the book of, let me show you something, the book of Second Kings chapter 2, read from verse 1 down to verse 15 or 16, you about. You will agree with me that no prophet in the Bible did the kind of miracle that Elisha did. Read the scripture, nobody. Elisha did unbelievable miracles. Elisha is the only prophet that had the ability that the son of the prophet told him that the axe I borrowed is inside the water and he caught a dry stick and threw it and the axe had flowed. Elisha is the only man that they went to him in that same second Kings chapter 2 verse 19. He says, sir, if you look at the city, it's pleasant. But the land is barren. And he changed the thing. Look at this miracle. Elijah did 16 miracles. Elijah did 62 miracles, 32 miracles. And all his miracles are standing. Why? Because he changed his mentality. Every other prophet believed that he or she is a servant. But when he had an encounter with Elijah, when the whirlwind came, he changed everything about him. You know, as a servant, you are not permitted to call your master, my father. It is not permitted like that. No way. You, a servant calls his master, master. And hear this. Your son has the right, sir, look at me. Your son has the right to enter your bedroom, climb on top of your bed and jump. But a slave cannot do that. Your son does not have an access but a slave can't do that. Am I talking to somebody here? And so as they were going, when the white wind separated them, he didn't shout. All these days, all these years, all these weeks, he has been calling Elijah, my master. How comes at that moment, he suddenly changed from my master to my father, my father? Because he knew that the mantle Elijah is carrying is not for servant, it's not for slave, it's for sons. Am I, can you put on and celebrate Jesus? It's for souls. It's not for slaves. It's for souls. So he shouted, My father, my father, the chariot and the horsemen of Israel. He didn't pick it as a servant. He picked it as a son. 
And that was why he did 32 miracles. I declare to somebody here, under the sound of God's grace and power and my voice, that whatever you can do, I switch you over from the level you were yesterday and I raise you to a new platform. I raise you to a new platform. In the name of the Father, I love the Son, I love the Holy God. Somebody shout Amen three times. Let me hear you. Amen. 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 That is who you are. I'm not a servant, I'm a son. And John confirm me. Jesus confirmed me through John. In John Gospel chapter 1, verse 12. He said, As many that believe, to them he gave them power to become what? Son. I thought you would mention slave. Is he slave? No. Ah, is he servant? He said, To become what? Sons. That is who you are. And if you are a son of Elohim, then you have the mandate to carry his task on air. You are an ambassador. It pains me sometimes where a day where the woman came to me and said, Sir, I had a dream. Oh, I had a dream. And somebody collected my child in the dream. And after three days, the child died. And I looked at her and I said, You are a fool. He says, I said, You are a fool. That you are a child of God and you are in the prayer band. And somebody came to the dream, collected your child. And two days, fever, fever, and the child died. I say you don't know who you are. You are not a daughter, you are a man. That somebody will stand and hear the sound of the chest that I will do you. Who is he? The day they created you, was he there? He was not there and he has no right to destroy you. That's what you should know. He gave us, we are ambassadors to carry his work on air. You don't know this. It pains me sometimes when I see people crying. A mother, maybe no, oh, like what the one I saw in Abbey when I went to a program. A mother, I think 11 children. A mother gave birth, is it 11 or 10? And they kill, 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 kill. I left with only one. And my prophecy got located over, and I saw a woman crying. And yet she's in the church. No wonder people will leave the church and run to Habalis to look for her. But a church is a place of solution. A church is a place where you don't need even the pastor to do this. You just come to this altar and you kneel down. Say, Lord, help me. I can do it. And let me tell you the reason why it looks as if not only Presbyterian church, the church has no power because we have lost sight in Psalm 91 verse 1. You see, he that dwell in the sacred place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. How many of us are dwelling in the sacred place? How many of us are dwelling in the sacred place? How many of us? The only day you want to fast if they give announcement in the church. The only day you want to fast if you are in problem. Have you just declared that Lord every month I will fast at least once a day. Stay at your feet. Stay at your feet. But look at what he gets on. He said we are ministers. In Isaiah. And look at Matthew chapter 28. Jesus encouraging us. But he has given us authority. Am I talking to somebody? Let me declare to you. Every force speaking against you. Every force challenging the gift, the talent God has given to you. Every paternal, maternal force that is standing as a stumbling block over what God wants you to do. Every force distracting you. I come in the name of the Lord. I declare to you, let fire consume it in the name of Jesus. Let fire consume it in the name of Jesus. Let fire consume it in the name of Jesus. I declare over your life uh, what God wants you to be. The work God wants you to walk uh, you will carry it. I say 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 you will carry it. In the name of the Father, I love the Son, I love the Holy Ghost. No man will stop you. No man. Am I talking to somebody? 
no man will stop you. I want us to take these three, three key things as we pray together. Three keys that Christ gave to us to use as missionaries when going out for evangelism. Three keys that Christ gave to us to use as missionaries when going out for evangelism. And I will speak. Number one. Number one. Wisdom. Are we together? Somebody shout wisdom. wisdom. Shout it again, wisdom. wisdom. Shout it the last time, wisdom. wisdom. Shout it again, wisdom. wisdom. Shout it again, wisdom. wisdom. It's simple. Without wisdom, you can't succeed as a missionary. Because it's wisdom that enables you as a person. It's wisdom that enables you as a person to understand certain things that men around you may, but will not understand. It's wisdom. And that's why I keep telling people, we don't read the word of God, we study the word of God. We don't read. The word of God is not literature. And that's why every book that has ever come out on earth, you see, first edition, second edition. The word of God has no first edition, has no second edition. And so we don't read, we study the Bible. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. He says, study to show yourself. Approve as a workman that need not be ashamed. We study. And so wisdom enables you to understand the word of God. Wisdom enables you to achieve certain things in evangelism. In places where others are failing. Wisdom enables you to understand the time and the season you are. Am I talking to somebody? And they get me? I keep telling people this. We don't use knowledge for evangelism. We use wisdom. And what is knowledge? Knowledge is to acquire fact. Am I talking to somebody? Knowledge is to do what? To acquire fact. You go to school to get knowledge. Understanding is to gather the fact you have acquired. That is understanding. Understanding is to gather the fact you have acquired. And wisdom is to apply the fact you have gathered. And so where there is no application, there is no wisdom. Am I talking to somebody here? Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, when you go home, study. It's very important. Joshua 1 8, when you go home, study. Ezra chapter 7 verse 10, you will see them there. Psalm 119 verse 15, all of them are there. When you go back home, you study. Number two, the second key that God gave to us is the name of Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. Jesus. Shout it again, Jesus. Jesus. Shout it again, Jesus. Jesus. Shout the last time, Jesus. Jesus. I said something. One day, a lot of people were criticizing it. But I know, personally, I have a conviction over it. If you look at Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. Please, projector help us. Matthew 16, 19. Let me show you something. Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. Can we read together? I want to go. He said, I will give the keys of what? Whatever you buy will be what? And whatever you lose will be what? Let's go back. Say, I will give to you what the keys of what? Of the kingdom of heaven. Let me show you something there. Jesus gave us this promise. And if Christ would have died, and after his death, he didn't give us the formula to, I mean, to, to use those keys. The formula on how to use those keys, we would have failed as Christians. Because when he made this statement, everybody, scholars, they were thinking, what kind of keys that Jesus is about to give to us? And those are the keys that are helping me in life today. The keys. And when Jesus died, they were asking questions. Even if he gives us this key, how can we apply these keys? Am I talking to somebody? When Christ died, he went direct to the gate of death and collected the keys. And he knows spiritually he can't give to us. So he gave us the key physically. And what's the key 
the name of Jesus. And that's what Philippians chapter 2, verse 10. He said, there is no other name given among men than the name of Jesus. He said, by the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is what? Is the Lord. You hear me? See, you don't need to wear this thing, this collar, to call the name of Jesus. Am I talking to somebody here? What Christ gave to us is his name. That you can stay in your house and you call the name of Jesus. He will appear to save you. Am I talking to somebody? That sometimes you are sleeping in their dream and they are pursuing you and suddenly you shout there, Jesus! And you wake up. Sometimes you pass those that want to destroy you. They say this night. And in the morning, as they woke up, they saw you sweeping, singing the name of Jesus. They say, we thought we are finished with our last night. But they never knew that. When they came to destroy, J-E-S-U-S appear. That's the name. That's the formula. That is the key. And so you need to understand that the key to apply is the name of Jesus. You don't need to align with him. As a missionary, the name of Jesus. Am I talking to somebody? Whoever and the, thing, the good thing about this name is that it doesn't look at the family you are coming from. You can come from the worst family. You can come from the most poorest family. You can come from the most richest family. You can be nobody. The name will still work in your home. That's the name. Praise God. We we're going to a program in Ibogo, Ibogo Parish, Presbyterian Church. And we finished, I finished from a program here. In a, uh, one of the city, I forgot the name of the church. But so we're going, so we're late, and they keep calling. When we go, I was driving. When we, we go to Akanga, I heard a voice. I see them, it's on the way. I told my boy. And I said, Lord, go back. I quoted Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10. That the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous run into it. And they are saved. You hear me? When we got to that Palm Estate, I think they call it BIA, something like that. When we got to that place, then I never knew that there is these guys that are working, the company that is working there, they cut the road, so they were trying to put this thing there. And this was after 8 in the night. And when I was on speed. Because they keep calling us. And I made, as I came out from the burning corner, I saw what came out from my mouth? Jesus! As I'm standing here, I don't know how he delivered me. But when I came back consciousness, I see the car, see the goat here. That name is so powerful. That name is so powerful. When you are weak, call that name. When nobody is there for you, call the name. I need no other argument. I need no other Mention that name. Let me declare. I join my faith with your faith. Any altar attacking your family, attacking your children, attacking your life, attacking your hell. Uh, by the mention of the name of Jesus, uh, I command them be destroyed. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Sit down for a moment. That name is powerful. That name is powerful. That name is powerful. That name is powerful. When you go back home, read Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, verse 34. Chapter 9, verse 34. Acts chapter 3, from verse 6 to 7. That Peter and John met a man who was slain. They said, silver and gold, we have none. But we have come to... With some, we have come with something that is greater and greater than every other thing. 
And that is the name of Jesus. They said in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Money has limit. Food has limit. But the name of Jesus has no limit. Am I talking to somebody? The final point before we pray together, people of God. The final point is one of the key, not key, our resources. Our what? Resources. Our resources. What do you have on earth that is not God that gave to you? What do you have? What do you have that is not God that gave to you? Are you aware that there are great men that are dying every day? And yet, you are alive. And everything you keep saying, I, 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 I. What do you have? And you forgot that one day, you will enter a place. I call it a very tiny accommodation. What do you have? Are you here seated? You have 10 cars, 15. It's God that gave to you. Are you seated here? The God of elevated you to a high. Is God. Are you here? What resources? You hear me? There are times we do things on earth and we don't know that the result is coming ahead. Am I talking to somebody here? I saw, I've been reading the scripture. Child of God, I saw a man in the Bible that has the audacity to change heavenly agenda by his resources. I fear that man till today. I saw a man in the scripture that has the ability that God is sitting there and the archangels, they sat and agreed in heaven. And one man on earth stood and changed the agenda. I fear that man. I'll be reading the scripture until when God gave me the revelation. I say, hey! So a man can change heavenly agenda. That was the day I knew as a person that we are not just human beings, we are spirit. I'm not going to somebody here. I fear that man, even as a minister to today. Can I tell you the man's name? <laughs> you thought it's David. You thought it's Abraham. Can I tell you the man's name? That man's name is King Ezekiah. King Ezekiah. Isaiah chapter 38. That man name is King Ezekiah. That God called for emergency meeting. You know, when session are meeting, when session say emergency, secular they will call it breaking news. Or something has happened. That decision needs to be taken. With immediate effect. And no man can stop it. Am I talking to somebody? My dad told me something. I don't know whether it's true. Daddy knows my dad. Very well. My dad told me that. He said, Reverend, when you play a praying today, my dad is an elder. He said, Reverend, when you play a praying today, you'll be speaking, you will call it unknown tongue. Me, I don't understand what you are talking of. He said, Oh, the Veteran Church in those days. If you speak that ba 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 ba. During an announcement, session with me for emergency meeting. <laughs> My dad told me. I said, say yes. The first question they will ask you, sorry, can you interpret that language you are talking? Praise God. <laughs> and I said to him, I said, Daddy, things have changed. Am I talking to somebody here? Let's come back to what I'm talking about. That man, Ezekiah, see, is an error for God who created me and you to sit and take decision. And that decision, by God's grace, agreed, sealed, and cemented. And they say, who are we going to send? They say, let's send who? Who? Prophet Isaiah. Isaiah then is a major prophet. That when he speaks, no man can change it. If they tell you that Isaiah is coming to this place, what's the name of this place? The community here. They tell Isaiah is coming here. All the prophets will stand. Everybody will be waiting for him. And they say, who is there? They said, Isaiah. Let him go and take King Ezekiah. Then let him put his house in order. 
for what he's about to die. Isaiah, you know, I'm summarizing. When God speaks to you, you have confidence. Am I talking to somebody? Even when men will say no, you say, hey. Isaiah went to his house and dressed up very well. You look at him and he told the king, I'm coming to see you. And perhaps the king thought that Isaiah is bringing a good news to him. When he entered, and Zika looked at him, he said, welcome man of God. He said, I will not see. He said, hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus say yes, the Lord. Put your house in order. For in the next four to five hours, you will die. Huh? <laughs> Look at them and say, not me. Say, not me. Say, not me. Say, neighbor. I have the ability to change things. If a man can change heavenly agenda, how much more principalities and power that are very, very small before you and they keep tormenting you and you are shouting every day. You are living in a compound with a wish and the wish is tormenting you. You know, we'll get to one night, give a spiritual slap. You are there every night, they will give you food in the dream. You eat in the dream, eat physical, eat in the dream. Something is wrong with you. Am I talking to somebody? And this man, he said, oh my, I have heard you, sir. And as I have done, I have given a prophecy to the king. They will know that I am a prophet. They will know that I am a major prophet. They will respect me again. They will honor me again. And when he left the presidential villa, the man ran back to his temple and faced the wall. I said, Lord, I know you have spoken. I know nobody can alter your word. I know nobody can change what you have said. But let me remind you, let me remind you. Let me remind you that there is an assignment I need to carry. Let me remind you that there is an assignment I'm not accomplished. If you kill me now, who will take over the assignment? Let me remind you. Say, Lord, let me remind you. Let me remind you. He said, Lord, uh, number one, I did this uh, offering and charity box for you. I did it. I did it. If you kill me now, who will carry the assignment? I did this one for you. I did this for you. I did this for you. I did this for you. Huh? And I want to change the church from this place to this other angle. Up there, let there be this biggest plasma that anywhere you are standing, the whole world will be watching us alive. I want to change it. And God said, Ezekiah, wait. Who went with that information? No, wait. Who went to Isaiah and Jeremiah? No. And Jacob, you convey emergency meeting immediately. Immediately. We need to talk. We need to talk. Emergency meeting. Call the attendants. They came together. They say, huh? He said, sit down. One of my son, though we have agreed, but something is wrong somewhere. I think that meeting is not in order. I think we can change the order of that meeting. Let me declare to you, every satanic agenda against you, I reverse it now in the name of Jesus. Yet I say it again to you. Let me declare to 54 of you, as I'm led by the Holy Ghost now, every satanic agenda, every satanic agenda, every demonic manipulation upon your life, upon your soul, upon your children, against your family, Holy God! Somebody shout, I change it now. Shout it again. Shout it again. I change it now. Hear me, child of God. The angels came. He was sitting. God said, No. Look at the new agenda. And Jacob, he said, Sir, I'm at your service. Go back. If we kill, if you allow him to die now, who will put these things? Assignment, assignment. 
Assignment, assignment. That is why nobody can kill you until God accepts you. Assignment, assignment, assignment. Nobody can destroy you. They can threaten you, but they can't destroy you. The Bible says, surely they will gather because they are gathering in the of the Lord. In seven ways, they shall do all, they shall scatter. That is a possibility. That is what we know. He said, yes, my enemies are fighting me. He said, no, in Psalm 23. He said, in verse 3, 4. He said, even though I walk through the valley, with the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For thy rod and thy staff, they come from me. He said, how can there be a seal of what you have just told us now? How can there be a seal? He said, thou prepare a table in the presence of my enemy. He said, how can there be? He said, surely, surely means seal. Seal, sign, cemented. Nobody says, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me. Is it only today? Is it tomorrow? Is it forever? That's our team. Mission, now, forever. That's our thing. Forever, I say, surely. And here this child of God, and, and suddenly, and Michael was standing. He said, go. We have just changed the agenda now. Go back. Sir, should I go to King Ezekiah? He said, no. Who delivered the message? Isaiah. Go back to Isaiah. Isaiah was rejoicing going. Everybody was clapping for him. Hey, the prophet. The prophet. See, let me say this to you. Anybody that feels that without him, you can't survive. May God give you another way in the name of Jesus. As he was going rejoicing, suddenly the message came. He said, Thou the prophet of God. He said, Yes, Lord, I know. Go back. Go back to where? Ezekiah. Me. You want me to embarrass myself? How will people say? What will people say? What will they say? He said, The instruction is do what? Go back. Anybody that feels he has destroyed you, anywhere you are staying under the enemies around you, I declare in the next 24 hours uh, they will apologize for you in the name of Jesus. He said, Go back. You have no choice. And as I turn, I don't know how the Tubino was looking like that day. When Ezekiah saw him, perhaps he tripped. Hey! Have you come again to add more sorrow again? He said, Thus say the Lord. God. See, God loves us. If God is to be a human being, all of us will not have survived by now. Jesus loves us. He said, Thus say the Lord. That not just two years. He said, I should come and tell you. That he has added you. How many years? Yeah. How many years? Yeah. Let's come back to Nigeria Constitution. 15 years is how many? Ten on. How many? How many? For four years. Three years. And how many? Extra three years. Okay, yeah. Three ten on. And how many years? Extra three years. So we we'll add in one more again to make it 16. Let me declare to you when men feel you will stop her. May God reposition you for answer. 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 In the name of the Father, I love the Son, I love the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yeah. You are a great God. He is a great God, he's a great God, all I know, all I know, he's a great, he's a great God, hey, he's a great, that is what he can do for you, ah. he's a great, he's a great God, all I know.
to pray. No man has the ability to stop you. Because you are a divine project in God's hand. No man. No power. No power. And that's why I keep telling people, anything God has laid in your heart to do, keep doing it. That is where we use and remember you. Keep doing it. Don't look at somebody. If God has laid us a burden, that my daughter sweep the church for me, keep doing it. That is where we remember you. Why will you want to look at me, sister? Hey, sister, this, sister, this. God gave you a burden to keep cleaning benches. God told you, let her clear. He said, keep cleaning benches every Sunday. You say, am I the only one? That is your mission work. That's your mission work. God laid us a burden to you that support my church financially. You can pray. You can pray. There are people praying. And you say, Lord, am I the only one? Yeah, am I the only one? Am I the only one? That is where he will remember you. In that particular place. He's a great. Oh, he's a great. He's a great. Oh, I know. agenda. You have the ability to change it like Ezekiah did. You have the right to change it. Don't let the devil knock you before it's his time. Defend yourself through prayer before the arrow will come. I want us to pray that prayer. If there are people to pray, there is a God to answer. We are living in a generation where men cannot pray but they are looking for results. Men and women cannot tarry but they are looking for results. We are looking, 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 that's the problem. And my prayer for this church is that God, Presbyterian Church of Nigeria, let, take us to the level where you want us to be. Take your own, your own way. Why would the apostle pray? Jesus pray and they swear in his body change. And men cannot pray. When you pray for two hours, you say you have prayed the whole day. That five minutes, you say you have prayed the whole day. And then you are believing God to have an encounter with you. I want us to pray. Say after me, Alka! Are you ready to pray? Say, Alka! Say, my father, my maker. As I begin to pray, every satanic agenda, and every satanic agenda, Working against me in this mission week, I command it to scatter. Open your mouth and begin to pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Pray. Let me hear you praying. 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 Ah, do town church. I know you can pray. Open your mouth and pray. Pray, pray, pray. Pray, 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 pray. You need that prayer. You need that prayer. You need that prayer. Pray. There's an agenda that you don't know, I don't know. Halabo shakata. Zatu in kapate brakata. In sholabre satu shakata. Pray that prayer. God's grace and power. In kalabada bada 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 bada. Every satanic agenda. Agenda may be untimely dead. Agenda, every satanic agenda. Kalabada bada. You have the right to change it. Come on, you have the right to turn it around. Pray that prayer in the, in the next few minutes. We are, so we are running up. Every satanic agenda. You have the right. 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 Kalaba, daba, daba. Pray that prayer. There is a God to answer. 
in the name of Jesus. The way you are shouting that amen, something is wrong. In the name of Jesus. Let me tell you, iron sharpens iron. We have two more prayer topics to pray. Lord, keep me to evangelize for you. You can't evangelize in the grave. When they tell people pray, they don't want. And that's why anytime God gives me a message and I give to somebody and you didn't pray about it, and when the thing happened, like the, like the present one that is going on now, the, thing, the, present one, the, the girl has lost her senses. We told her this thing, I think about three months ago. I called her, she came. I said, this is what God said. Go and fast and pray. I see you removing your cloth, walking naked. It's happening today. And when they call me, I said, I will not pray. That's Reverend Kelly for you. It's better you pray now. And the mother is crying. Even my mama, my wife, told her the same thing. He said, hey, nothing, nothing is happening. But something is happening now. When they say pray, you don't want to pray. You say, Lord, listen, you cannot speak against the spirit of death. Because you can't stay in the grave and you're praying. You can't stay in the grave and you evangelize for God. If there's anything that God should do for you, is to give you long life. To see your children, children. And death is a spirit. And so he, death can hear. If you rebuke it, it will flee. Jesus did that in John Gospel chapter 11. He said, Lazarus! He gave a command. Death disappeared. Lift up your hand. Say, oh God! Oh God. Oh God! As I begin to pray, every spirit of death that want to take me to early grave in order to stop my mood of evangelism, oh God! I return it back to sender. I tear that gasket. Open your mouth and begin to pray that prayer. 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 Lord, a shato prakada, irekada da 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 da. Shato ekabada da. Arise, Okoda. Every power of terror, every chain of terror, that want to stop my ways, that want to stop my service, that want to stop my joy. Larry Kashaya, I return it, Okoda. Every gasket carry my name, carry my children name, carry my family name. Every gasket we will not enter. You can't stop God agenda. You cannot stop it. You can't stop it. Pray the prayer in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Finally, I want us to pray this prayer. Lord, every projected arrow that has been humiliating me in my body, in my soul, any arrow that has been projected far back, that has become a snare in my family and my life, that has become a mockery, that has become a disaster. Lord, take it away. You hear me? As I was praying this morning, the two prayers to be prayed, this is the one he asked me to pray. If you can pray with the whole of your heart, if I be a man of God, before this week will run out, there shall be a good news over your life. And no man can change it. Any projected arrow that has become a snake in my family, in my life. See, you can be looking so beautiful physically, but this side of you, you know that it's not where. You know that it's not where. You know. You know, you know how the devil has humiliated you. Even some of you that are believing God for higher position and other things. There's going to be a way out of your prayer, this prayer. There's going to be a change. There's going to be a turnaround. 
Say Lord Jesus. Every projected arrow. To humiliate me. That has become a snare. In my life. In my family. That has become a shame. In my life. In my family. What are you doing here? Get out. Don't pray. I want you to give that command. I want you to give that command. Let heaven hear you. I want you to give that command. Say, oh God, every projected arrow in my life, in my family, that has become a shame, that has become an embarrassment. What are you doing here? Get out! We still give that command again. Say, rebuke the devil and I shall flee. Say, oh God, every projected arrow carrying my picture, carrying my family name, carrying our image. What are you doing here? Get up! Let me say this before we make the final declaration. In our faith clinic, that was a month ago, because we used to hold it every Saturday morning from 7. People come from different places. Some of you that have come there. The crowd, like last Saturday, the crowd was too much. Beyond measure. But from different churches. People tell you, I made a few people from other churches. I saw something that I personally... In that program, I shared that tears. A lady was pregnant for three months, and the husband is not taking care of her. Anytime the man brings money, he has a girlfriend somewhere. He will go and eat the money, drink and drink with the girl. So one day, the man dropped money in the house. I want you to because I want us to pray. It's important. The man dropped money in the house. That was six thousand, think so. And the lady carried the money because no food to eat by force. And he went and used the money. It. So when the man came and was shouting, who carried this money? The lady kept quiet. Who carried my money? If I don't see anybody, I know where I can go and do something. And the wife was afraid that if she opened her mouth, oh, the man may kill her. As the young man left, the wife never knew. That he went to somewhere in a charm and said, Whoever carried my money, let the person remain like that through his life. A woman has carried a pregnancy for five good years. Wickedness. And finally, when the lady told him the word, he drove the woman out. I shed tears in that program. There is wickedness in the world. I don't know the arrow they are projected to frustrate you for everlasting. But thank God there is a God that is a friend to all. Thank God there is a God. There is a God. There is a God. What God did, even though she didn't put to bed, but we finished praying for her, we did everything God asked us to do. Bless water for her. And she took it. She went back home. She was with us last, last Saturday morning. Went back home. As soon as she lied down, things started coming out. The child had decayed for years, so the things were coming out. Right. Weakness. I didn't cause the man, but I pray that God should touch him to repair. I don't know the arrow they are projected to you. I don't know. But do you know if that arrow remains in your family, it will become a shame. Blind Bartimaeus is not called Blind Bartimaeus. It was his condition that gave him the name. And everybody that comes there, you say, where is Blind Bartimaeus? They will show you. But thank God for the king of kings. When the master arrived, 
He makes a way when there seems to be no way. Lift up your hand. I want you to declare. Say, oh God! As I lift up my hand, any arrow projected to my family, arrow of shame, arrow of sickness, arrow of disgrace, arrow of bowerness, arrow of disappointment, what are you doing here? Get out! 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 Open your mouth and begin to pray that prayer. Pray that prayer right now. Make that declaration. You know the arrow. Mention the arrow by name. You know what is troubling you. You know. You know it. Mention it by name. As you're about to summarize, uh, you know it. You know the arrow. Mention it by name. Mention it by name. Mention it by name. Mention it by name. Ah, somebody start mentioning. What is that condition? That condition that has brought shame, embarrassment, disappointment. That condition that looks as if there is no way. That same condition. Loma Shaka da da da. That is an arrow. Rebuke it out. Command it out. Let God hear you. A Shatabra Gada. Arise, O God. A Kada da 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 da. Shatabra Gada. A Kada da da. In the name of Jesus. Please help me and lift up your right hand. Anyone sitting on your celebration. That have allowed you to go. That refuse to allow you to go. Wherever they are sitting. I stand as a prophet of God. In 48 hours. If God has ever called me. And I kneel in this altar. And I declare, if he has called me, I command the person to stand up in the name of Jesus. As you lift up your right hand, Malato Shaprakada, Zien Kapadaba, anyone that has vowed that you will not come out from this challenge. That you will remain there. You keep shedding tears. Every demonic signature sign against you. I wipe it out in the name of Jesus. I stand by this testimony as you are carrying up your hand. Thank you, Father. I heard the Holy Ghost telling me anybody that your flow is not in order. As I'm talking now, in the next five hours, there shall be a free flow. Amen. Thank you, Father. There shall be a free flow. Amen. Your flow just sits like that. Your message just sits. From now, in the next five hours, what the doctors cannot do, what injection cannot do, what drugs cannot do, I stand as a prophet of God. I heard him loud and clear. In the next five hours, uh, there shall be flowing in the name of Jesus. Lift up your right hand. Thank you, Jesus. I stand on this testimony that a lady came to a faith clinic. She, she used to work in the court. In the court, and they refused to pay them. She has been there for some time. Right there in Abuja, she came to Calabar. They refused to pay them. And she just kept crying, and the Lord said, Declare. No, first, after the prophecy, I was just standing there because God didn't tell me what to do for her. And I asked him, Lord, what, Daddy, what will I do? And he said, There is power in your tongue. Speak, let them release that money. And I declare by God's grace, I stand in this altar. I declare 
The next three weeks, he called, he called my number, my number didn't go. He called my mom. I went to a program somewhere at Amanango, at Arochoko. So she couldn't get me. And he called mama. He said she was just there. And she heard an alarm. And when she opened her phone, they had paid her her money. So she came there and gave testimony. If you are there, you heard it. And she said, now I know that there is God in Presbyterian Church. And they used to tell us that Presbyterian Church is a dead church. But I've seen God in Presbyterian Church. You can't mess us up. I'm a born Presbyterian. I love Presbyterian Church. And I will stand anywhere. Any place I go to a minister, even in Winner Chapel as minister, I told them I'm a Presbyterian man. Born as a Presbyterian. Am I talking to somebody? I stand by that testimony. Anything, any satanic altar is holding. Hold it that belongs to you. That they refuse to let it go. I stand in this altar. I release it to you in the name of Jesus. As you lift up your right hand, I declare. Anyone that have promised you and fail. Mission now. Ever. Anyone that have promised you and failed. If the person is in position to do it for you. I declare. Even if there is no way. By God's grace and power. I join my faith with your faith. We create a new way. And I declare the person will not rest. Until that assignment has been accomplished. In the name of Jesus. I speak as I'm commanded now. Anyone that is here. That duck keep pushing in the dream. That the duck beats you on your leg. Whoever that is in that duck. I stand. I stand. I stand. That in three days. Let the person be disgraced. I declare under the covenant of grace and power in agreement with the faith of my daddy and this altar and all the elders standing here I speak over your life is there anything you cannot do to men it is impossible but not with God I join my faith with your faith as you live here in the next 12 hours. May you receive a phone call for answers. In the name of Jesus. I release these three prophecies, please. As your hands, your two hands are lifted, I release these three prophecies to you as God gave it to me. I decree, you hear me? Anyone that is using your soul to perpetrate evil, and people are looking you as a, looking at you as a wish. I declare, whoever is doing that, if God have told me now, whoever is doing that, in the next four days, let the person be disappointed. Yeah. Lift your hand. Anyone, this is Calabar. Anyone that has a compound. That plantain is by the side of that compound. And demons are using it and they are, as their cover. That every night the bed will come and perch there and start making strange noise. Whoever is in that bed, if I be a man of God, monitoring your family, monitoring your life, monitoring your children, whoever is in that bed, in the next 50 seconds, let the bed drop there in the name of Jesus. I declare the last one, Kalabo Shata. As I was praying, he told me this thing to pray for you. I declare wherever you are standing and your spirit is telling you, you will die, God said, I should tell you, you will not die. You keep hearing that signal, fear of death. 
you keep hearing the signal of death i have come as god's oracle wherever the arrow of death is coming from i return it back to sender in the name of jesus thank you father i pray this prayer you may not like it but god asked me to pray anyone living around your compound that have refused to allow you to have rest that keep tormenting you that keep tormenting your life i declare in the next 15 seconds that mirror in your house that they are using it as a point of contact in your bedroom that mirror i command that mirror to blind them in the name of jesus I say this as I pray finally for you. Hear me, child of God. There's somebody here. Listen, stand up. Let me pray for you. I'm summarizing. There's somebody here. Somebody cut the edge of your rapper. You saw your rapper. They cut it. They cut the edge. I stand as God's son in agreement with my father. I declare wherever they have taken your cloth to, in order to, to bring shame, to make you remain the way you are, let that cloth of fire in the name of Jesus. Wave your hand and celebrate Jesus. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. That moving up during your tummy is gone. Celebrate. Celebrate him. That wrong information coming is over. Wave your hand and celebrate Jesus, please. You are not bigger than him. Wave your hand and celebrate him. Let him know that you love him. Please. Wave your hand and celebrate him, please. He loves you. He loves you. Please and cele keep celebrating him. You, you know how what he has done for you. Keep, keep doing that, please. We love Jesus. We love him. Let him know. If you can celebrate local government chairman, you can celebrate a councillor, you can celebrate a governor, you can celebrate president, wave your hand and celebrate him. Is it because you have not seen him? May the Lord, who has been so faithful, help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Shout amen three times. Amen, me, let it be so. Amen. Two. Amen. Three. Put your hand and celebrate Jesus. When I sit down, celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah.